to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. You would think that with all of the achievements, the frustrations should diminish. You would go to the house of a very wealthy man and turn left and right and see everything you desire and aspire for. And yet that man is still looking for something. And you're asking, what are you still looking for? And the man will say something like, I can give up all these things you see for what I am looking for. And he's still frustrated. Remember when he made his first million. Remember when he made his first billion. He thought it would give him that peace and satisfaction. And even in the midst of plenty, remember the first time the man boarded a flight coming from a background of penury and poverty. He was happy and smiling. Now he may probably have his own private charter or his private jet and in the midst of it, there is still that frustration. How about those who hang and write letters with billions piled in their accounts and shoot themselves or hang themselves as painful as death is that a state can come in a man's life where it seems better to die than to live? Are we still together? How about a young preacher on campus catching the fire, praying for eight hours, praying for nine hours, learning about Greek and Hebrew as a new experience. And my goodness, this gentleman is now beginning to step into some kind of dimension of grace. Now they invite him for small fellowships and the power of God is moving. This young man is rediscovering a whole new world about his destiny. Happy and excited for a while. Then campus days are over. Then he desires to start ministry another frustration comes where do i get venue where do i get money and then he starts ministry 30 years later he's angry frustrated looks back and he does not even know whether he was called or not <laughs> what are we really looking for please i want you to listen to this message the lord put it in my heart to share for the terrorists or one who would stand and kill people and rob a bank and rob people what are they really looking for for the preacher who has a large congregation and yet continues to pray and say god give me increase what are we really looking for for the one who has successful children all graduates, all successful, all working, and they still have prayer requests. What are they looking for? The one who just made his first billion in dollars and is still looking for something, still submitting proposals from state to state, nation to nation, region to region, fighting and arguing over wars, fighting and arguing over um, contracts. What is he looking for? For the man of God who has been in the faith, working with God for 40 years, and he's still fasting and praying, what is he looking for? For one who has seen the power of God move in his life in uncommon, unimaginable dimensions, what is he looking for? You will thank me for the message that you are hearing tonight. This message will give your life meaning. It will give your life perspective and indeed it will give you peace are we learning the bible says there are four that never say enough it is not within their there is nothing they never attain any state where they can say i have had enough i've had the honor and the privilege of studying very successful people and successful systems 
I didn't want to be a failure myself. I hate failure. Hallelujah. And I knew that for you to succeed in life, you would need knowledge and indeed a lot of it. And so I submitted myself to learning. I still do. And I'm humbled by the things that I've learned through the years from books, from men, from materials, and even from my own experiences. I used to think that the greatest tragedy in life was failure. That the worst that can happen to a man in life is that that man fails, fails to achieve his or her dreams. But I would soon discover that there is another tragedy that is greater than failure. And it's not death. This discussion is not about those who are dead. This discussion is about those who are alive. What is worse than failure? I will tell you. There is one thing that is worse than failure. It's called success without fulfillment. That success without fulfillment would bring a greater sting, a greater frustration than even failure. It is possible for a man to be successful and never be fulfilled. In my studies and my learning about God and learning about systems, learning about principles of posterity, principles of um, stability in the lives of people and in organizations, I have found out that the subject of fulfillment is one that many people have downplayed to their detriment. There are many, many, many people today who are victims of the absence of fulfillment, even though successful. The greater tragedy, greater than failure, is a life of success that does not have fulfillment. In Genesis chapter 37, when you read from verse 15, the Bible talks about Joseph. I just want to borrow a concept there and then I'll begin my teaching. That Joseph was sent to go and look for his brothers. And the Bible says, And a certain man found him, the him being Joseph now. And behold, the Bible says, He was wandering in the field. Wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? He saw him wandering. Who is this young man? very visionary but you are wandering in frustration it seems to me your body language and your action suggests to me that you are looking for something i see your determination i see your press it seems you're going back and forth you're waking up in the morning i see you're going to have a master's you're going to have a phd i see you're attending conferences and trainings they suggest to me that whilst you are wandering around there is something you are looking for the question is, what seekest thou? What are you looking for? That has made you travel to US for trainings, travel to Canada for trainings, that even in old age, you are not ashamed to go back to school again. What seekest thou? What is that that you are looking for that makes you to hate and detest failure so much Books upon books, you have a library that is full of them. And anything that looks like useful information, you are like a sponge absorbing anything that seems to propose a greater life. Please keep that scripture there. 37, 15. A certain man found him. And behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him a simple question. What seekest? As simple as this question is, ladies and gentlemen, you can spend your entire life trying to search for the answer. You would think you have found the answer and 10 years added to your life, you would discover what you found was not really the answer. Many people have gone to their graves unable to answer this question. What are you looking for? 
what is that which motivates you why are you doing the things that you are doing there are people who retire respectfully speaking from service and they cry and beg and say retain me again even though the company and the organization is saying you've tried you've served for 30 35 years go and rest they say no i don't want to rest what seekers thou? when a patient runs around looking for a doctor traveling from nation to nation what seekest thou write this down please understanding the subject of fulfillment understanding the subject of fulfillment is one of the pillars for living an effective life on earth understanding the subject of fulfillment is one of the pillars for living an effective life on earth hallelujah i took out time to learn the subject of fulfillment because i do not want to live a useless life in as much as you love me, in as much as you believe that I'm a man of God, sent from God, in as much as you have been blessed by the privilege of the investment of grace upon my life, do you know it is possible to live a life impacting people whilst you are frustrated? Do you agree with me on that? There have been many people on earth, in the secular and even in church, who kill themselves in the presence of overwhelming impact traveling from pillar to post blessing people while everybody's calling you a blessing you are dying in total frustration in fact i will tell you this psychologists will tell you that some of the people who are perceived to be the most successful people are about the most frustrated people they live lonely lives they are on drugs they have to live off therapy after therapy and you are surprised you go to their offices and you see awards day and night and yet those people can wake up one morning and literally die of frustration it means there is something that if we do not understand we stand a risk of living a life that is extremely successful but and in the midst of our success we find out that we live defeated lives that do not count as far as fulfillment is concerned for someone shout no way in the name of Jesus Christ I've met very old people I like to see elderly people especially those who have done something notable I believe they have profound wisdom and I can learn from them and I will tell you the truth a number of them even in old age in the course of our discussion have been very open to tell me apostle I did this, I, that, I did that, I traveled here, I traveled there, some of them preachers, some of them business people, and they would tell me that there was still a longing in their hearts, that they felt like they did not do enough. What is fulfillment? Please write this down. I define fulfillment as the satisfaction please write it i define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively the fulfillment the satisfaction and the joy you may want to add the satisfaction and the joy that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity fulfillment is the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity It's called fulfillment now i want you to tighten your seat belt and sit quietly as i teach you something that i truly believe 
will revolutionize your life i have taught a bit on it here um but then i want to teach this in detail it was a miracle and it was a deliverance to my own life from living a life that was futile filled with only success without fulfillment i want to live a life that is both successful and a life that is fulfilled by every standard are you ready now there are six fundamental human needs write it down please there are six fundamental human cravings they are more than needs they are desperate cravings that every man provided you are alive it is the craving that defines the motivation that drives everything that you do in your life whether from a spiritual context whether from an economic context whether from a sociological context all of us as the human species are driven essentially by these six needs but believe me they are more than needs they are cravings that literally your sense of fulfillment from a human standpoint depends on your having these cravings satisfied that if at any point in your life these cravings are not met and represented in your life it will only spell utter frustration no matter what line of work or career whether you are a preacher an apostle a prophet a businessman an academician a family man young old male female educated uneducated black white it does not matter this is a reality that is common to us all six fundamental human cravings human needs are you ready please write them down number one the need for security please write it down every human born of a woman has this craving from within them the need to feel secured physically secured emotionally secured now these needs vary based on gender based on age based on levels of exposure but ultimately all of us have the same need it is just the various degrees of this need that now define what we call our personality security men will give up anything to feel secured even if they are not secured sadly and unfortunately we've had several things happen across kaduna for those of you who are in nigeria here the mayhem that was unleashed on people it's unfortunate it's been quite a tragic two week especially for that region and you can imagine so everyone within that region would crave for security and the moment you see a military man wearing a uniform you are happy to see that person is that true because that person represents security number two the second human craving is the need for variety or dynamism please write it down variety or dynamism this is the reason why anything that is new especially in the mass media cells because we like to know what is the breaking news what is the new information people hate boredom it's not it's not given to the human species to endure boredom indefinitely people like things that create variety that's why people find special moments and celebrate them that's why you do not wear the same color of cloth every day for instance that is the reason why you you are tired of a house that you've been living in and you will want to move to another house it's a craving for variety companies based on this awareness reinvent their products reinvent the packaging of their products and just by reinventing the packaging of their products can rise to millions of dollars and billions of dollars simply because they satisfy this craving for variety same product they don't have to change anything as far as the product is concerned but they gave it a presentation that was new and appealing are we together number three the third craving that is in every human being is the need for significance write it down please this is a very serious one especially to men significance 
the concept of respect as we know the concept of honor we know that is embedded in most of the masculine gender if not all came from the need for significance when you bow down and you greet me and say good afternoon sir why am i excited as you're bowing down when you kneel down and say good afternoon ma it is it gives people a perception of significance are we together now people crave for significance they crave for it more than you can ever know preachers parents young people business people men women everyone significance people crave for respect people crave for honor and people crave for acknowledgement you know what acknowledgement is to make sure you are aware of the extent of the worth of that individual and that you can attest to the fact that that individual is that valuable it's called acknowledgement people can go to any length to be acknowledged businessmen pastors politicians have become act enemies for decades simply because someone's pedigree was downplayed by not being acknowledged or not acknowledged properly are we together if i sit on any of these beautiful seats or i sit on the ground or i sit on any white chair anywhere what difference does it make in terms of um in terms of my physical person it may not necessarily make any difference but it seems to communicate a sense of significance a sense of acknowledgement a sense of respect a sense of honor and you can't believe how people crave for it in every occasion there is something called high table high table it's still table high now what is the difference between those who sit there and those who sit everywhere else they can even eat the same thing in every flight there's what is called first class there's what is called business class and economy these are various names that were invented to help manage and communicate the idea of significance are we together you go to certain places and say this is a priority route this is a regular route all these names vvip uh, vip you know and all of these things they are all they are all various attempts please pay attention to what i'm teaching you significance you cannot imagine the degree to which you crave for significance it's a craving that many people it would take a lot of enlightenment to even be aware of the extent to which you need it number four are you ready for the fourth the fourth craving desperate craving of all humans is love and acceptance the need to be accepted please underline that word acceptance the opposite of acceptance is rejection and go and ask any psychologist and any man of god who is serious with god and they can tell you the 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 severe consequences of being in a position of rejection are we together love and acceptance please look up why do you think most people join occult groups i can tell you go and ask most of these young people while in secondary school now unfortunately i don't mean called like village called groups the one that you know these guys that move around and you ask them what, what they are looking for they will tell you i came from a family where nobody believed in me nobody accepted me and here is this group and they told me if they can scar my body and do all kinds of things i will be accepted and they will endure such pain provided it will provide acceptance hallelujah people crave for love and people crave for acceptance people have cried because doors were shut at them they were not accepted 
people have cried because they did not give them employment it was not about the employment or lack of it but that it was communicated in a way that shows that you are rejected and they go back feeling things that have no business with that job so is this how my life is going to be hallelujah praise the name of the lord yes there are sincere men and women who come seeking counseling from psychologists, seeking counseling from men and women of God. And they say, look, I think I'm a beautiful lady. I think I'm a handsome man. And look at my life. Nobody has ever said good morning. Nobody has ever said good afternoon. What is making them feel that bad? The sense, a longing for acceptance and the pain of rejection. Is someone learning? Number five, what is the fifth craving? of all human beings growth and increase people crave to grow people crave desperately to grow every parent wants to see their child or their children grow every child wants to grow to become an adult um, parents many of you would see children a young child who started walking and doing all kinds of things and if the mother should leave her dressing space to that child one day the child is going to surprise her you will come and you see the child trying to put eyelashes trying to put all kinds of things the child is insisting and say i can't wait for 18 years it's too long or 15 years or whatever let me make my attempt now and the child will paint himself into all kinds of things the need and the instinct for growth how about teenagers you flog them and say, be patient until you are 18 before you start driving. The same car that will be tired and pack it one day. But they will fight once they are 17, 16. You will have to flog them, advise them, make them quote scriptures to stay in one place and wait for just one more year before they start driving. The need for growth. The need for growth. The need for growth. especially in africa most people hate being called children when except it's a very old man who says you're a child but anybody who is maybe just a few years older than you if he calls you a child say look you are older than me but don't you dare call me a child i'm not a child because there is something about our passion for growth even children now say don't call me a child what are you i'm not an adult but i'm not a child anyway <laughs> everybody say growth when someone holds a master's certificate or a PhD or another certification somewhere why are they happy to celebrate those milestones it gives them a perception of growth Luke 2 and verse 52 even in fact when you read from verse 49 to 52 Jesus himself passionate about growth the bible does not leave us in the dark he went as a teenager the bible says he was at the temple learning building his mind satisfying that need and that craving for growth and the father and the mother joseph and mary went around looking for him when they found him at the temple he said unto them how is it that ye sought for me wish not that i must be about my father's business verse 50 the bible says and they understood not the saying which he spoke unto them 51 and he went down with them and came to nazareth and was subject unto them but his mother kept these things in her heart 52 popular scripture and jesus increased say increased in wisdom he increased in stature physically he increased in favor with god and with men everybody say growth Growth is very powerful. I do not know anybody, no matter how critical, who does not celebrate any major milestone in his life. People celebrate birthdays. People celebrate anniversaries. Why? Because it culminates to growth. As a man of God, if you have 10 members and God brings five more, you are careful to celebrate and say, thank God for this. The concept of ingathering has come to stay in the body of Christ. Yes, because we want souls saved. But in truth, in addition to that, it is the instinct for growth. Everything that is alive grows. 
Now, not to get you offended, there are children who have medical conditions that impede their growth in one area or the other or their overall stature. You find out that you can see a child who is three years old, four years old, and then maybe because of some deformity or some you know, health issue, the child cannot grow properly. It is a concern to any responsible parent. Is that true? How many of you have seen children, again, respectfully, who um, maybe they had to repeat certain classes, maybe primary one, primary two, and the child is there for three years, four years, and you find out that people come and say, what kind of a child are you? You will now say, your colleagues are in primary five or something, and you are still here. And the child feels bad because the child wants to increase. The child wants to grow. So number one, security. Number two, variety and or dynamism. Number three, significance, acknowledgement. Number four, love and acceptance. Number five, growth and increase. Are you ready for the last? Number six, impact and contribution. The sixth craving in all humans, regardless who, is the craving to know that your life is counting that you are living an impactful life and you are contributing towards a cause let me tell you this this sixth craving is so serious this is one of the root causes of um violence that is accelerated in many underdeveloped nations because most young people are they want to be part of a cause part of something and because they are idle there's nothing the moment they see that there is something that catches the attention of media everybody wants to be part of it whether it is election whether it is whatever it is they want to be part of anything happening that there is that that dopamine feeling of relevance that feeling of knowing that i'm doing something my life is counting for something hallelujah there is nobody who does not want his life to count i can tell you this in all of the messages and all of this that people send the most touching for me is apostle thank you i listened to your teaching it changed my life now i love the lord more now i'm passionate uh, about the things of the kingdom or your teaching has brought me knowledge you know why it gives me joy yes jesus is glorified but it gives me joy because i can through that text message it can give me a basis to say thank god my life is counting there is nobody who wants to live as a non-entity to know that your life is not counting how many people have resigned from jobs because they felt that they were being underutilized they felt there's nothing i'm doing here i think i'm worth more in terms of impact than this it's not about the salary i'm not doing anything i just sit down and sign documents whether i come to work or not my salary is there i don't think i am productive they say but what is really driving them is the fact that they want their lives to count when we acknowledge people we begin to list some of the things they have done that has blessed us so 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 and so man he has blessed me he's changed my life as a businessman he's mentored me as a lecturer as a man of god and you see the people rejoice and give glory to god but then you can see that fulfillment because their lives count now i will tell you why i listed all of these things all that we seek for all that we look for all that we work for all that we pray for is hidden in these six things believe me when i tell you every single one prayer request written here during the miracle service every single desire that brought you to the house of god no matter how you want to twist it spiritual from a psychological standpoint is an attempt to draw into your life one of these six cravings let me repeat myself all that we seek for all that we look for all that we fight for all that we work for and all that we pray for is hidden 
in these six psychological needs. This is very powerful. Write this down, please. Nothing physical. This is a sad news, but it's also a deliverance for someone now. Nothing physical or material in itself can ever give you fulfillment. Nothing physical or material in itself can ever give you fulfillment. What a deliverance. What a deliverance. What a deliverance. That nothing physical or nothing material in itself can ever give you fulfillment. Back to my illustration when I started teaching. Remember the young boy? Remember the married man? Remember the career person? Remember the old man? No wonder, in spite of their various levels of achievements, one thing that still remains in their life is the need for fulfillment. As a young boy, as a student, as a graduate, as a married man, as a father, as a grandfather, as a career person, as an expert, as a poor person, as a millionaire, as a billionaire, as an enlightened person, as a successful man of God. The same thread runs through all of these people. A craving that many do not understand. So, watch this. We invented various ways of trying to fulfill this craving. I can tell you that is the principal cause of frustration in today's world. Is God speaking to someone? The principal cause of frustration many people live lives that are frustrated today and you will ask them what they are looking for and they cannot really articulate what is driving them what are they looking for they think they are looking for a car they think they are looking for a house or a bigger house they think they are looking for a husband or a wife they think they are looking for twins or triplets please listen very carefully Believe me when I tell you nothing physical and nothing material has been authorized by God to give anybody fulfillment. None of it has the power to give you fulfillment. Wow. Not your certificate. Not your marriage. Not your children. Not the cars you buy. Not the titles. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying these things are not useful. But I'm interpreting for you the thing you are really looking for. You think it is a car that you are looking for. I'm giving you an advance notice. You will find that car and only rejoice for a very short time. That's why we enjoy things that are new. And then they stop giving us fulfillment. Remember when you bought the SUV. You smiled and gave God glory, danced around it and snapped it. It's in your house, but you wanted it to be within your sight. Four months later on, it's not fixed and you don't care. What changed? You found out that it did not have the ability. You thought it deceived you. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry treasure of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come. This is very powerful. For who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love, beauty, and less worth. Hallelujah. Man of God, I know you think what you are looking for is more members. You are sincere. But that is not what you are looking for. What seekest thou? My dear sister, I know you are trusting God to have children. It is your obsession and it is your prayer. Lord, if only you will give me children and take away this shame. You are sincere. But let me announce to you in advance. 
that is truly not what you are looking for you are only looking for it because you suspect there is something in it i'm going behind your physical desires to tell you what you are really looking for can i tell you not knowing this is the reason why respectfully speaking many homes are broken and scattered the man is saying i hate you every time you fight anybody in your life let me tell you what you are fighting i don't care what is the subject matter what you are really fighting is a violation of these things you hate people to the degree to which they violate your agenda to having one or more of these six so when the woman looks at the man and says you are a stupid man i regret marrying you you are a devil from the pit of hell shift all that english what is she saying you have robbed me of, of an opportunity to feel secured you have robbed me of an opportunity to feel significant you have robbed me of an opportunity to feel accepted you have pegged and limited growth in my life it is a all of our english is just a way of trying to express this cry when a man of god is frustrated and say lord anoint me what is he saying lord give me what will take away shame from my life he's saying now he thinks he just wants soul saved and he's right but why does he need the anointing that he will lock up himself for 40 days what does the anointing do to him he knows that when the anointing is there the sick will be healed oppressed people will be delivered and inevitably the lord himself will increase his influence so he would have significance he would have acceptance are you seeing now when you buy a car why do you rejoice i will tell you you are too smart to rejoice over a metal it is not the metal that is giving you joy you think it is the car that is giving you joy that car is spelling something to your psychology significance that car may make a group now finally accept you what you are really looking for is not a car i bring you an interpretation so that we'll find rest from this endless mundane pursuit most people don't know what they are looking for remember what seekest thou because the professor finds out that he's still frustrated like the one who just has ssc the married man is still frustrated as the unmarried man the barren woman is still frustrated as the person with eight children the billionaire is still frustrated as the one whose business has died so what are you really looking for nigeria lost at the stadium now i'm not i'm not a footballer i'm a patriotic citizen why did people get angry people cried like they lost loved ones what did they really lose yes thank god for all of the name but to you what hurt you so bad that you lost your appetite was it really the ball do you like a round object that much no you were hoping that that result will help to give you a little dopamine feeling that you are in an environment that works and since it did not happen it reinforced again the fact that you might truly be a failure dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline